Hello and welcome to part two of my pirate radio adventure. If you've watched part one, you'll see how the story has developed so far with regard to my association with these uh, transmitters and how it was formed. If you haven't already watched that, I suggest you watch that before you watch this one. Anyway, let's go back to Arthur's designs. Um, Arthur's designs were classic old and sadly now rarely used circuit building techniques where the uh, components are mounted in free space over copper board with relevant components tacked in and out of circuit as required. This makes for very quick assembly and uh, most of this was actually done with no circuit diagrams on the table. He absolutely freeformed this. So he kind of knew these circuits off the top of his head, which was even more amazing for me. Um, at this time I, I met this guy Dave. I mean, if you think of Christian Slater in the, if you haven't seen it, very cool pirate radio movie called Pump Up the Volume. Um, Dave was interested in the DJ side of pirate radio, but as he, as he was uh, not a work colleague at the time, there was a lot of resistance in bringing him along and him joining the group. I mean, don't forget, these were all licensed radio ham guys, and whilst it wasn't illegal to make and or own the transmitting equipment, it was very illegal to use it. So, to use it. so um, I acted as an intermediary. He wanted a transmitter, so I agreed to ask on his behalf. This started a few fun nights that went pretty much as follows. I bought the relevant boxes and bits of board, including the main power transistors, and Arthur supplied the rest. Being an old school radio ham, he had jars full of old components that had been stripped from TV sets and radios. With the exception of the small Cermet trimmers and the power transistors, all of the other components were totally recycled. At that time, I had an orange mini with an almost personalized number plate. I raced out to the village where Arthur lived, parked up and tapped on the front door. Arthur, who was always suspicious when anyone knocked his door, would always open it very carefully, look left and right, then invite me in quickly. What a great character he was. His house, well, it was just, let's just say it was how he liked it. It was replete with old records piled high, boxes and electrical bits and bobs piled everywhere, and engine bits. Arthur was also keen on making cars go very fast. It was very evident there wasn't, at this time, a woman in the house. After a quick cup of tea, Arthur would always amaze me with some new invention he had created. I did say Think Doc from Back to the Future. Remember one day in particular where he had made nitroglycerin and promptly tested it before me by tapping a hammer on this small blob of liquid on the side, which made an almighty bang. After a bit of a chat, Arthur got to work. It was, it was literally like watching a hairdresser. You know the way that they can cut hair and look around and chat without even thinking about it make a few calcs, throw a jar at me, ask me to dig out capacitors, resistors, clip a few wires, blob solder here, move things around. It was quite a thing to see. You could tell he'd obviously done it before. Arthur's designs were based, as we saw in the first episode, on frequency multiplication. way you can start off with a much lower say 7 megahertz oscillator and come out with your 105 megahertz very much more stable oscillation at the, at the other end. The design was split in two halves we've already seen and it keeps the separation between the, the front end and the power uh, you know so that you don't get any issues between feedback between the two. After the second night of me sat there being amazed by all this, Arthur had got the basic output frequency that this guy Dave wanted of 105.3 FM. This was well out of the way of any station at that point, although these days locally there are stations either, either side of that now. Arthur hooked up an old 78 rock and roll record on an old gramophone and plugged the mono output into the radio. All of the transmitters made at this point were only mono. There are reasons for that which include power requirements, but I'll leave that for another day. Upon turning on my portable radio, I picked up this lovely old crackly tune right on frequency. It was super late, so I bid Arthur a good night. He asked me if I would listen to the signal on the way home in the car and let me know when it got bad. Pretty much the first night, the signal died shortly after I had left the village, so about half a mile. I lived about eight miles from him. The next night I returned, the second power output stage was soldered in and I returned home later that night. This time the signal went much further, I could hear it about a mile away from his house as it faintly drifted out of uh, earshot. The next day I was super excited because the power transistor had arrived. I had ordered at a price, but that was £15 which seemed super expensive to me. 
This was really the heart of the beast. Without this, Dave wouldn't have a chance. The low end stage before the preamplifier mixer was about one watt, probably not even that. The output power of the radio was going to be roughly 15 watts. And with the right location, where I had already seen from my visits with the other guys that they could get a range of over 20 miles. The group I watched could easily get into the near city of Oxford on a good day, which was 25 miles as the crow flew. Pretty impressive. Armed with my shiny copper clad Motorola power transistor, I zoomed back to Arthur's. He had pretty much prepped the area and the transistor was soldered into place. Wanting a visual gauge, and very likely something to amaze me, Arthur connected a big resistor and a light bulb to the output of the amp. The power switch was thrown and the bulb lit. Not brightly, but it lit. Then Arthur adjusted the trimmers all through the preamp and the power amp and each time the bulb got brighter and brighter. A very visual way of setting up radio, something that people still do, or certainly radio hams. He disconnected the bulb and connected up the dipole plopped on the old rock and roll record and I disappeared into the night. It was very evident how much stronger the signal was now. There was no fading, no dropout. This crackly old 78 tune accompanied me the full eight miles back to my house. I was so excited that it had worked so well that I called Arthur up to tell him. I then listened on for a few seconds until there was a dull crack and the music vanished to be replaced by whispering static. How amazing was that? Right, we've got the Vectronix dummy load here. Um, this one is a 50 ohm load. It should be good for 300 watts. So I think we're quite safe. Um, but uh, as you guys will understand, there's no way I can uh, hook this up to the antenna. So we'll get this on the dummy load and not cause any problems. Let's uh, let's give it a try. Right, the um, we had to ditch the um, switch mode power supply. It didn't seem to like the uh, um, uh, the power amplifier for some reason so um, we're going to try it again um, just to see if we but this time we're actually going to use you know why not it's, this is you always run on a battery but we're going to give it some lipo power so we've got this um, old uh, 12 volt lipo battery which is very useful uh, model battery there and we'll, um, we'll we'll stick that on it it only should draw two or three amps it's not a huge amount um, so we should be okay on the load side of it but um, It'll just be interesting to see if um, if this is uh, pushing out the sort of power it used to. I, I doubt it's going to be 15 watts, but I think anything over 10 watts I'm going to consider a success. Okay, let's prattle. Um, the scanner is on, so let's um, queue up Andy and get a bit of, get a bit of tunage going just to make sure it was working first. Okay, Andy's playing on the phone there, so we'll um, we'll leave that playing and then we'll turn on the the preamp here. And there we go, that's a familiar tune. Okay, I'd say the volume's about right on that. We'll check it on the SDR, just to double check it. But, um, right, so this is the moment of truth. Will it go bang? What will happen when we hit the power amplifier button? So, uh, let's see, shall we? Oh, red lights, let's go to the power meter. Oh, there you can see. It's putting out a, a good 10 watts and we're on the 20 watt scale there and it's put, putting out 10 watts which is about what I'd expect actually. We're only running this on 12 volts and um, how much for the dummy load is getting warm. Oh no, it's nice and cool. <laughs> so I, I consider that a success definitely. A radio that's not been used for such a long time without any tuning. I could probably tune that up to get a bit more out of it but what's the point? It's not going to be used so yeah, I think that's a definite, definite success. Okay, this is the final test on this radio before it goes back in the box. I uh, thought we'd just double check to see what kind of current consumption the unit uses. Um, so with the front end on, just the, the pre-amplifier section on, we're looking at 140 milliamps there. 
So, and like I say, but it's not putting out hardly any power at that. Um, so let's just see how that jumps when we stick the main power amp on. And as I suspected, about 2.4 amps, 2.45 amps. Okay, so that's about on par with what you'd be looking at. Right, okay. That's the end of the test wheel. Let's pop this back in the box. This has been a long episode or a long couple of episodes. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to do a follow up one because I've got a lot more information about this uh, scene, but I'm going to leave it there for now. I really hope that you've enjoyed this foray into the darker side of radio, and I hope that uh, you don't jump on me too harshly. This was 30 years ago. I was a kid and didn't see any harm in it. Um, I wouldn't recommend anybody nowadays um, starts using pirate radio transmitters when there's no actual reason anyway because you'll get as many viewers by starting a YouTube channel or by starting an internet radio uh, setup and that's uh, a lot safer. So if you've enjoyed this please give us a like, if you haven't already please subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks again. That was deep.